<laughs> if I'm not looking straight at you, it's because I am trying this thing today um, where I broadcast on both Facebook Live and Instagram. So I'm doing this via my phone and my computer at the same time to see if it works. So if there are any issues, um, let me know that you're having maybe some difficulty hearing or something. But I am so excited to be coming to you guys and hanging out on a Friday afternoon. Um, here in Ohio, it is sunny um, afternoon. It's feeling great. I was out on a little hike with my kids this morning, um, but we were lost in the middle of the woods, <laughs> but we found our way back, thank goodness. Um, but I know that some of you are going to be joining from across the United States and even overseas. I can never get over how powerful it is to uh, do things virtually and do it online where people are coming from all over. So welcome, whether it is daytime or evening where you are. Um, I'm excited to hop into this topic. Um, I did a poll both on Instagram and on Facebook and people shared that this was something they were interested in, ways to communicate with your partner about postpartum. I have not seen much content on this myself, and I know that it has been an issue that my husband and I have had to be really intentional about. Um, and I'm just noticing if you're on Facebook, you will see that our whiteboard does say sex. So <laughs> I did not erase that before I hopped on. <laughs> um, Hey, you know what? If you need to like write it and make it exciting, you know, I'll show you on Instagram too. So you see that we sometimes write things on our whiteboard just to connect with each other because we don't always have time to talk, which is a huge point we're going to talk about today as we're discussing ways to communicate with your partner about postpartum. So for those of you who don't know me, if you're hopping on because you saw um, a tag or a hashtag or something come up live, my name is Chelsea Skaggs, and I am a postpartum coach. I actually started my coaching journey um, talking about nutrition and wellness and kind of physical health, and what I realized was there was this huge gap. So women in their postpartum, um, they knew they wanted to maybe like get back in shape or um, focus on something that they could control because life feels out of control a lot when we're in postpartum. And what I found during that time was there was this huge gap when it came to addressing a woman in her full experience, in her full transition of postpartum. There's lots of things out there that talk about physical health. Um, and luckily there are more and more things popping up that talk about mental health when it comes to postpartum. But this is such a huge life transition. There's this full array of things that we are experiencing and so I niched in um, my coaching. I did research for months, um, about a year of research before I put that into um, a coaching program called Postpartum Together. So if you're on Instagram, um, it is postpartum together and uh, postpartumtogether.com is where you can find information about that. I coach women through the five pillars of postpartum, which are mental, emotional, physical, relational, and personal identity. So today, uh, we're going to hop more specifically into the relational part. Because whether you are in a marriage, you've been married for 10 years, you've been married for a year, you're dating, um, you're not dating, you're, you're co-parenting in some other aspect, a relationship goes under a huge transition uh, when you have a baby. And this postpartum time is a time that we know women change, but we often aren't addressing how relationships change and how a partner might be changing and evolving and how the entire family unit is changing. And so we are talking about how to communicate this with your partner. I am a big fan of um, recognizing that when we're in the heat of something, when we're in the midst of it, it's not always just our responsibility to educate people. Um, you know, if someone has a different experience than me, um, maybe a different sexual orientation or um, a different race or ethnicity, it's not their job to educate me on it. But sharing stories gives us the chance to change the narrative, um, to give people the tools to be educating themselves and to kind of progress together. 
And so if you are a postpartum woman, again, I'm not saying this is your job to teach your partner how to support you or how to understand your transition, but we're going to be addressing today some tools that you can use so that you can be more on the same team, using the same language, um, and kind of addressing some of those things that can cause tension uh, and aversion when we are in the postpartum time. So I'm excited to see you guys. Hello. Um, again, I'm on both Instagram and Facebook, so if I'm not looking directly at you, it's because I'm looking at the other platform. So I think we can agree. Let's hop in here. We can agree that a lot changes right after a baby, and it continues to change through postpartum. Uh, just to dial it in, I do not say postpartum is six weeks. I do not say it is the length of maternity leave or 12 weeks or whatever that is. Postpartum is the time after having a baby. <laughs> so uh, I love your questions. Keep them coming, and I will try to make sure to remember to address them. So postpartum is this time after a baby. It is not specified into a certain amount of weeks or months. So do not feel like you have to be back to normal at some certain time. Don't feel like you are losing your mind if Sorry, my mom called. <laughs> Don't feel like you're losing your mind if you're still trying to navigate things months down the road. I am seven months postpartum. I'm not postpartum and then some afterwards. I'm still in my postpartum period, and that is totally okay. That is one area we need to continue to change the narrative. A lot of people are addressing postpartum as maybe two years, and I think that is much more appropriate as we continue to discuss it. So. We can agree that a lot changes immediately, but it continues to change throughout the postpartum period, which is up to two years and even beyond. We continue to undergo these different changes as the dynamics continue to change. Limited time with our partners can be stressful. Hello, can we agree to that? As if it's not stressful already, we start to see that we're having limited time to communicate, to connect, to just get to know one another in this whole new season. And so that can cause some stress. And naturally, we're focusing on the baby, right? So there's less focus on, oh, what does my partner need? Because we're taking care of this tiny human that needs us all the time. Another factor that I think we can agree on is that sleep deprivation is not easy on anyone. And I've not talked to many parents who did not experience just the stress and tension of sleep deprivation early on with a new baby. So here's the deal. We can easily tell our partner that he doesn't understand or she like sub whatever makes sense there for you. I'm going to use he because that's my experience with my husband. Um, you can easily tell your partner he doesn't understand. They probably already know that and just saying, oh, you don't understand <laughs> is not super helpful. I get it because sometimes that's exactly what I say, but then we've got to continue to follow this up with some things more intentional that requires some pre-planning, some understanding, and being on the same team. So let's hop into these five ways that you can communicate with your partner um, to help them understand postpartum because they're going through changes of their own. I think that it's important for us to recognize that yes, we're going through changes and so are they. Um, chores are very substantial. They're physical, mental, emotional, like, they run the gamut, and so helping them understand helps us to be supportive and supported and on the same team. So this first way to communicate that I recommend for you guys um, is pretty easy. Share the social media pages or the blogs or the books or the magazines, whatever it is that you are getting life and information and inspiration from, share that. So if I'm on Instagram and I follow, um, for example, I'm going to use Mommy Labor Nurse. If you don't follow her, she's fabulous. Um, she talks a lot about birth, which is a little different from the postpartum period, but I share her profile with my husband because I think her information is really helpful in understanding the birth process. And that in turn helps my husband to understand what my experience has been like. Um, there are a lot of great resources out there that deal with um, postpartum mental health. Um, you know, there's some really good therapists that post about um, postpartum emotional transitions body changes, pelvic floor specialists, things like that. I share those profiles with my husband because I might see it and I might learn something and then I'm 
going to be pissed because he doesn't get it and he doesn't understand, but he doesn't get it and he doesn't understand. And so I just share the social media profiles or blogs or um, books, magazines, wherever I'm getting an understanding about myself in postpartum, I'm going to share that with my husband. Again, I'm not taking on the responsibility of educating him because I have a load of my own, but I'm the one seeking out those resources and it's helpful for him to get that same information and be able to be on the same page with me. Now, he chooses not to look at it and read it. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, so some things that I think would be helpful to share with our significant others um, is just all these different pressures that we feel. And so I've listed a couple, but this is like not um, a conclusive list. Uh, breastfeeding or not, and how that affects our bodies, our hormones, our emotions, all of that, that choice the different hormonal changes that continue to happen through postpartum, the mental load that women take on that has for years kind of been um, called or substituted for mother's intuition. And so at first I was like, yeah, like I'm a mom, I have this mother's intuition. But after two and a half years of that, I realized that that actually has created um, maybe myself internalizing it, but also like society putting on more of the mental load on me. And so that is a conversation and information that I share with my husband. Um, the transition back to work, finding a daycare person. Again, these are things you might be working with your partner on, um, but they're things that are worth communicating about. Finding a schedule, keeping up with appointments, um, and then just the societal pressures that men don't face. No one looks at a man who's holding a two-month-old baby and is like, hey, when are you going to drop that weight? No one does that. They laugh because he has a beer gut. Like, stupid. Um, milk production. So, you know, our society doesn't often talk about the ways that women's bodies produce milk in a different way. And this is a huge emotional factor for women. So that's something else to maybe share resources or ideas um, with your husband about. And then also this, like, expectation for a woman to be completely joyful in her postpartum period. Like, you just have this baby, you should be gleeful, everything's beautiful, it's the best time of your life. And so sharing how women have different reactions, maybe send your husband an article or something to help them understand that this is the societal pressure that we internalize that isn't always helpful. All right, so we are sharing some resources, social media profiles, blogs, magazines, books, whatever it is, where you get your inspiration and information. Don't teach your husband on them or your wife or significant other, whoever your partner is. You don't have to teach them. Share the resources with them. Number two is also about sharing, um, but this is sharing lists and resources. And so I'm talking about like managing the schedule and managing what needs to be done and doing that in a shared way. So I'm gonna share a couple of resources that work for us. Um, we use a lot of things on our phone. So again, like iHow, putting appointments and all of that in there to make sure that people are able to team up together and pitch in and make those things happen. Um, another thing that's really great for us is called AnyList and that's where we keep our grocery shopping list. So if I open the fridge and the eggs are gone, I'm gonna put that on AnyList. And if I am, you know, the one who's going to the store, I'm near the store, I can stop and get it. If my partner's at the store, he can stop and get it. Like, it's just ways to continue to make it a little bit easier. And then we also um, use a to-do list with priority tiers. So here's something that drives me nuts, and my husband knows this. If he's like, hey, honey, how can I help you? I'll be, <laughs> this is my typical response. How can you help me? What do you mean, how can you help me? How can you help our house? Can you look around? Don't you see there are things that need done? I kind of freak out. That like is a total trigger for me. So something we know that we need is to have this list that says these are the priorities. So if you get an extra minute, if you have some free time, I don't want to have to rack my brain for what needs done. I want us to be able to go and share these resources to say, hey, go find it. Go take care of it yourself. Because, um, again, the intention is, like, not to be harmful. Obviously, like, he's not trying to upset me. But I often feel like, oh, mental load. I can't help. I can't take any more. Like, figure it out. So we put these systems in place. And, again, I have 
like a superb husband. Um, but we put these systems in place because we have to. And so one, I recommend that you guys help share the resources that are educating you Two, sharing lists and resources and things like that so that you can be on the same page and you're not like in the moment coming at it with what needs done or what do we need from the store or um, what's the baby's schedule? Like have them in a place. I can take care of it myself when I need to find it. He can take care of it himself when he needs to find it. We're a team here. <laughs> so number three for communicating about postpartum is asking questions. So this goes for both of you. This is something that um, you know you can make sure you're utilizing yourself in doing with your partner and ask your partner to do this back to you. Not saying that you might ever have times that you're feeling critical, <laughs> but if you are, think of some ways that you can turn criticism into a question. And I, you know, the same, I like expect this of myself. I expect this of my partner. Um, criticism can feel harmful. It can come out of tension. It can come out of sleep depression and stress and all of those things. So trying to stop yourself in a trigger moment and your partner doing the same and turning a criticism into a question. So one, this helps your partner to understand why, why are you freaking out or why are you thinking about this? this way or what's, you know, like what's going on in your mental space, it helps your partner to understand when you're able to address a question instead of a criticism. The same thing for you. Like I said, we go through a huge postpartum transition. Your partner's also going through a transition. So the more times that you can turn your criticism into a question, it allows you to understand your partner, your partner to understand you. That takes a lot of intention. That's kind of like, just put this mental reminder in. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. And remind yourself, like, I want to freak out right now. I want to say something that's critical. I need to turn this into a question. Teach your partner the same thing. Make that a mutual expectation the best you can. Uh, number four, to help them understand, I encourage you to have a code word or phrase for when you can't think or speak clearly. I think it's fair for our partners to know that there are times when we are maxed out and we are not going to say kind things or do kind things. It's not the time to have a conversation. And this goes along with scheduling a time to have a conversation, a flexible time, because I don't know about you guys, but when my husband and I schedule time to have a conversation or sex or whatever it is, it seems like that is like a trigger for our kids to be awake and be like high level energy. But as best as you can, have that time set aside where you can have those conversations. And don't freak out in the moment because I think we lose a lot of chances to connect and understand each other's experiences when we're freaking out in the moment. So have a code word or a phrase for when you just don't want to have that conversation because you know you're not going to be your best self. And then save it for another time when you can have a clearer conversation. All right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. I'm seeing some new faces hop on, so I hope you get to catch the beginning. I'm on my fifth tip for you. Um, and this is being mindful of the language that you are using. And this, so we're talking about how to help our, our partners to understand our postpartum. If you're saying to your partner, hey, honey, can you babysit this weekend so I can go get dinner with my friends? Like we are literally teaching to perpetuate this system that is one-sided and has this skewed view of our postpartum experience and who we are as women. And so changing the language, we don't ask our partners to babysit. We say, hey, I have this plan. You're gonna be in charge of the kids at this time. Um, we put it on our calendar because calendars are good resources for partners to share. Um, as far as just communicating, we, we change the language to a partnership. Again, if my husband says, hey, how can I help you right now? I change that language and I say, no, how can you contribute to the household right now? Because it's not about just making me happy. It's not me dictating. It's not me making all the decisions. It's saying, how can we be in a partnership to help our family function the best? So we are changing the narrative by changing the language that we use and engaging with our stories. And I, as I was thinking about this today, um, let me know if you agree, I think our culture is just very ignorant and uneducated about postpartum. 
And if we stop and think about it, a lot of our leadership in our workplaces and our policymaking is still in the hands of men. And for years and years, women have not shared their postpartum experiences. And then we're at this point right now where we have a lot of people sharing, we have a lot of people sharing this experience that's actually skewed. It is filtered and looks like it's perfect. And then we continue to perpetuate this system where we're not safe to speak up for ourselves and to advocate and to actually share our experience. And so by changing our language, by having intentional conversations, by really engaging this in a perspective that is teamwork, we little by little, starting in our own homes and our own relationships, we can contribute to changing the narrative, to changing the systems, to bringing more awareness through our stories and through the ways that we talk about our postpartum experience. That starts in our homes, that starts with our partners, that starts with having clear communication, honest communication, advocating for ourselves instead of bottling everything in and then clipping our lids, which you guys, I've done that too. And I've taken like two years to, I still do it sometimes, but about two and a half years in postpartum with a kid, um, I think I've gotten a lot better at it. But these tools, again, I'll recap, share the social media, blogs, magazines, books, whatever is insightful and informative to you. Share it. Don't read it and then whatever, tell it to your partner. Just say, hey, this helped me. Or this helped me understand my pelvic floor. This helped me understand why I'm not in the mood for sex right now. This helped me understand how my hormones are still shifting. This helps me understand why I don't feel an instant bond with baby. Like whatever it is, you're probably looking it up and reading it. Share that resource and help your partner to gain that perspective. The second tip for you was to share resources for time management and home management and just sharing the load. So apps, um, maybe a family calendar, like whatever works for you. Third is turning criticism into questions as much as possible that goes for you and your partner, like agree that that's something you're gonna do because asking questions when you're frustrated is a lot more insightful than just saying critical things to each other. Um, four is having a code word or phrase for when you cannot think or speak clearly and you know if they continue to provoke you, it's not going to go well. So just being able to step away schedule a time to have more purposeful and calm conversation. Um, and then number five is being mindful of the language you're using, the stories you're telling, the kind of narrative that you have going on. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to just hop and stay on here for a second and look at any questions or comments. Um, yeah, so a little over four years, someone shared a little over four years since giving birth, and I feel like maybe the last six months just started getting back into a groove with bodies and schedules and so many changes that continue to happen. So I think that that really highlights our need as a society to stop talking about postpartum as six weeks when you go to the doctor's office and they clear you for sex and exercise. That is not the conclusive period of postpartum. It's also not synonymous with maternity leave. It is a much longer transition. Um, see if there's any other questions that we had on here. Um, the dumbest question you have ever asked for an inspirational moment in your life. So I can just, um, with my partner, I probably have asked some really dumb things, but even if it's just like when I'm stressed, it might be, um, like fixing my plate of food so that I can go sit by myself. It might be asking to sit <laughs> like in a room by myself for a moment, um, or just usually it's time. And I don't actually think that that's a dumb thing to ask for, but my rationale might not always be understandable. Um, best inspirational moment in my life was probably definitely the first time I gave birth. I just felt like a damn powerhouse. Like I just birthed a human into the world. So I inspired myself there. <laughs> um, I think that's all the questions that are worth answering. Uh, so I am going to let's see, check a couple more. And if we are good, we're good. And I hope that some of you who are watching this in the replay, go ahead and drop your questions below. And I will come back and make sure to check in with them. But I hope that these are helpful. I'm also going to take the notes um, from this live 
and put them into a blog post so that you guys can check that out and share with the people um, that are in your life, whether that's on Pinterest or Instagram or whatnot. And if you are in your postpartum or you're soon to be postpartum and you know that group coaching could benefit you as we work through mental, emotional, physical, relational, and personal identity, um, again, the site for my group coaching program is postpartumtogether.com. And I look forward to seeing some of you there. Have an awesome, awesome weekend.